I'm Alex Honnold, and I think Row Robinson is the man. All of us that are in the sport today that make a living from it, we have a sense of gratitude to Royal for showing us the way. Royal is as solid as those huge granite walls. Royal Robbins. And we're really happy to have with us today Royal Robbins. Royal Robbins, one of the greatest uh, climbers of the Yosemite era. In the late 1950s, the sport of rock climbing was in its infancy. At the time, there were no rules, there was no system, and no regulations and guidelines to climbing. But in Yosemite Valley, California, the sport was about to change. A revolution was starting. The valley was about to become the epicenter of a climbing explosion. Put a na man's name behind this revolution is easy, and that name is Royal Robbins. Robbins is such an important leader in this uprising because of his new philosophy on climbing. Robbins was a climber above all else. And climbers in those days were characterized by what is known as dirtbag existence. Meaning most every climber was a homeless, jobless, moneyless, and overall dirty renegade. Robbins may have fit into that category, but he knew that didn't mean nature had to be subject to his dirtbag ways. Robbins was an intellectual. He knew almost everything about the earth, and he knew how fragile and precious the natural world is. Rock should not be any different than a forest or lake. It's a respect. Robbins wanted all climbers to realize this. By using only removable gear and establishing many routes that bolts were banned on, he was able to show the climbing community the world of clean climbing. Robbins wanted other people to see how much better it is when bolts were not leading your way every move. You had to place your own environmentally friendly gear. Out of this came Robin's list of rules and regulations not only how to climb, but what to use. Robin's helped to develop climbing gear that could be easily removed from the rock. This idea was what gave way to the immensely popular and important idea of leave no trace. He led route after route, teaching the importance of respect and showing the beauty of our world. Not everyone was in agreement with Robin's philosophy, however. One man in particular was constantly at odds with Robbins, Warren Harding. The two were about as contrasting as two people can be. Harding believed in climbing for glory and fame. He thought it didn't matter how you got to the summit, as long as you were the first and the fastest. The ludicrous amount of bolting and altering he did to the rock greatly angered Robbins. Robbins saw Harding as an embarrassment to climbers and the sport of climbing as a whole. Two shared rivalry that brought them to walls all across Yosemite Valley. The fight was finally brought to a climax at El Capitan, where Harding began to climb a 3,000 foot tall pillar of earth called the Nose. November 1958, Warren Harding. Wayne Murray and George Whitmore complete the first ascent of El Capitan in a final 11-day push. Harding spent more than 45 days living on the wall. <sighs> Back to work. Harding took the camping style climbing, which he and his team would go up one pitch at a time, not only drilling an excessive amount to reach the top, but also rappelling down to the valley floor every so often or getting home-cooked meals and supplies generously roped up to them for the small percentage of days they were actually on the wall. After almost a year later, and after 45 days on the wall, Harding reached the summit. Why in God's green earth do you guys climb mountains? Because we're insane. <laughs> there can't be any other reason. <laughs> in an act of retaliation to the dirty climbing of Harding, Robbins went up the nose and began taking out all the bolts that Harding had played. Robbins wanted to make a statement. He wanted people to know about clean climbing. He pushed for a better system of climbing. He wanted the world to see that climbing isn't about the destination, it's about the journey. Robbins felt as though he had made his point. He did continue to push the sport and push the clean climbing philosophy to become the accepted way of climbing it is today. Vaughn. Robbins felt that he had changed climbing for the better. Now he needed to change climbers. Dirt bags or clothes that were simply acceptable to climb in. They weren't clothes made climbing, nor were they made with the climbing lifestyle in mind. The clothes were wasteful. They couldn't stand the elements or the activeness of climbers. 
Robbins and his wife Liz started a business selling that was with climbers. The building was sturdy, and it was made with an environmental conscious befitting of Robbins. The two of them originally made the clothes themselves and took them out the back of the couple's van. This was the humble beginning of the Royal Robbins Company, which is now an internationally renowned outdoor clothing provider. But it is undoubtedly the policy of the company that makes it so noteworthy. True to Robbins' clean philosophy, the company has, since its founding, upheld the strict policy of eco-friendliness. The clothes are made from eco-friendly materials, and the company has a rewear program to encourage its customers to keep from wasting clothing of any kind. Royal and Liz adopted this policy as a philosophy, not a marketing strategy. You can serve and protect the wilderness in any way, on the walls and off, was a central belief to Robbins that throughout his life he spread. He was one of the first to talk about clean climbing. He was one of the first in business then to talk about sustainability and conservation. Today, countless other outdoor clothing companies have followed in Robbins' footsteps. It's now commonplace to see clothing companies of all kinds to adapt environmental conscious policies in not only selling their clothes, but also in producing them. Unfortunately, Robbins died this year at the age of 82. He's remembered as a renegade, a climber, a businessman, an activist, and a leader. He pushed the sport to new limits. He made it what it is today. Climbing is now a forefront for environmental activism. Robbins made it so. He not only changed the way climbing was done, but he changed how it impacted the world. He started an industry to this day is perhaps the front line in the fight for the planet. No one can come close to the plain cool that is Royal Robbins, and the planet and all of us owe him gratitude. In the fall of 1963, Yosemite Valley heavy hitters Yvonne Chouinard, Tom Frost, Royal Robbins, and Chuck Pratt scaled the southeast face of El Capitan in a continuous nine-day push. Uh, hey, who has the toilet paper? Uh -huh. Oh, how savage. <laughs>